Hello there, Virgos. Welcome to your weekly reading. Um, first of all, when I was shuffling the spread, um, what I had for you was, I see this woman, she's, um, she's wearing this Victorian dress. She looks like, almost like, um, a governess, you know, somebody that takes care of the household, takes care of the kids and keep the, the mansion, the estate running. She looks, she, she's, um, I believe she's a mother, but she looks more like a governess, like she's a little bit cold, a little bit distant. And um, she has her kind of finger wagging, like she's scolding somebody. And then on the ground, you see this little girl, she's probably like five years old, she's holding a doll. And there are broken, like two broken plates on the ground. And it seems like she was scolding at the little girl because uh, the, the girl probably broke those plates from the image that I saw. And the girl is, is sad and, and she's kind of ashamed. And she did a little curtsy. She, you know, bent down and, and, and kind of distracts the governess by spreading her, her dress and doing a little curtsy and then smiling. And the the governess it seems like her heart is is melted and then she stops yelling or she stops scolding that's what it feels like to me and um so in alignment with this reading i feel like the cards are corroborating the same theme what i have here is the page of cups and i feel like there is somebody in your life who is a little bit of a charmer who's a little bit of an attention seeker and I feel like, you know, this is somebody that might have been very evasive when it comes to their responsibility. So it doesn't really matter how old they are. They could be a child um, or they could be an adult acting like a child or behaving like a child. But they are a little bit of a charmer. Like they weasel their way out of situations by turning on the charm, turning on the waterworks. Um, they know that you they are cared for and i feel like they they tend to push boundaries a little bit okay so if you're dealing with children you want to be a little bit careful when it comes to their behavior and how oftentimes they can turn on the charms or the the water work to get out of getting a, a scolding or to avoid um, repercussions for their actions or even you know to um to, to kind of charm their way into people's hearts, okay? So that's what I'm getting. Um, for some of you, this could literally be a child. For others, it could be a relationship partner, and then for others, family members. Um, I'm also sensing as well co-workers. I'm not sensing it strongly, but I feel like it could be a co-worker who is a little bit um, kind of like evasive when it comes to handling their responsibilities. So if this is somebody that you're dealing with in the work front, and I see this a lot for you guys, it's almost like energetically you guys are such workaholics and you guys are such good workers that oftentimes you are... Um, put alongside people who are slackers and I feel like you know there is a major karmic lesson here about them needing to learn from you it's almost like you're setting the the bar really high you're setting the standards of integrity and work ethics and they're supposed to learn a, a big karmic lesson from you about personal responsibility personal obligation um, stepping up when other people are not in the picture or stepping up regardless of who's looking you know it, it's almost like we do what we need to do because it is a part of our responsibility so whether or not the boss is watching we still need to work whether or not we feel like it if there's some group some people that are dependent on us we need to step up okay so it's almost like you can charm, you can turn on the water work. The work is not going away. So we need to handle responsibilities because it is our obligation to the place of employment. It's also because other people are depending on us to do our due diligence and to, you know, um, take care of responsibility. So, so they're, they're supposed to learn these karmic lessons about, you know, self-sufficiency, about um, as well, uh, understanding that they need to hold up their end of the bargain 
and a lot of the times from what you're supposed to be learning from them as well is to learn to ease up a little bit is to learn to you know um delegate responsibilities and also to learn to set boundaries so that responsibilities are not dumped upon you because these are opportunistic types of people and uh, when they sense that you're you're very very kind and and when they sense that you're able to that you're doing things like above and beyond your your scope of responsibilities they like to dump responsibilities on you so i feel like there is a karmic lesson um, needing to be learned from both parties in the work environment okay um i definitely feel there is something cracking it's almost like the straw that broke the camel's back and so this week there is a lot of responsibilities that you have to take care of and you are not in a position to take on more. You're in a position to learn to say no to other people, to learn a very uh, direct way to say no to people, to draw very clear boundaries, and to also set people in their place, okay? What I have here is the Ten of Wands. This is a lot of things that you have to take care of, a lot of loose ends to tie up, a lot of things that you're physically carrying around. And if you are kind of like trying to avoid people, I usually think of this as like, you know, he's using those uh, wands to cover his face, not wanting to see people, not wanting to uh, confront people, conflict avoidance, trying to just avoid certain people. This is really a week for you to step into this power with the Ace of Swords. This is like saying what's on your mind and meaning it and learning to say no to people learning to cut people out okay the man on the horse he's a little bit shocked by this ace of sword it's coming out in such a fast and swift and truthful manner that he didn't expect so if you have been kind of like you know the doormat i feel like this is the week where it's like enough's enough i'm i'm, I'm not going to be taking on other people's responsibilities i'm already you know stretched thin I'm already wearing multiple hats. I'm already going above and beyond my scope of responsibilities and it's not fair. So you're going to set the record straight and you're going to preserve your time, which is very uh, little and very precious to you so that you can take care of the things that you need to take care of. Okay. Um, I also see as well, um, there might be issues when it comes overall with um, like conflict within the family what I have in this spread though and I, I don't want you to fret okay I have a lot of love I have a lot of communication and a lot of love and so the people around you they truly 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 care about you even those co-workers that slack off they they care about you they don't want any harm to fall on you not only because you have your use value to them i feel like they like you as a person they're just opportunistic they would do this to anybody so it's not personal right and um i also feel like the family members you know relationship partner even what i have here is the ace of cups you have two aces ace of swords and ace of cups communication needs to come from the heart okay it's not about scolding it's not about you know chastising somebody for their wrongful behavior it's about telling them you know you have to be a little bit more responsible with those plates like like you broke those plates because you were reckless when you were playing so being a little bit more delicate and gentle and toning down the communication when you're interacting with people that you love and especially if you're interacting with people it's almost like the um, the delivery, the tone, the attitude matters a lot. And you want to be cognizant of that. Because what I feel in this spread is there's a lot of love involved, but maybe the delivery of a message needs to be changed, needs to be softened up, needs to be um, thought out a little bit better, okay? But what I do feel is, um, you know, there's definitely some people weaseling their way out of dealing with ramifications of their actions. There are also people as well. Um, this is sort of like 
um, conflict, not seeing eye to eye with people, but it's a very slight, minor type of conflict. And a lot of it has to do with control issues, wanting to control other people, wanting to control environments, wanting to control a situation. This could be coming through from your end or from another person's end, but there's an element of control and wanting to have like a, um, it's like my way or the highway, you know, it's almost like, um, it's not so much about the broken plates because, you know, the image that I saw was a child. Children are going to be children. They're going to be a little bit reckless. They're going to be a little bit clumsy. And so after everything is said and done, the plates are already broken. The child's already ashamed. And so they don't need, you know, that further reprimand, I guess. Okay, so gauging the situation and, and, and picking your battles and knowing when to get involved and when to kind of withdraw. Okay, um, so that's what I'm sensing here. I feel like in relationships, um, there might be a little bit of conflict coming in. And I feel like it's ideological in nature, ideological in nature. Um, I have here a fire sign, a Sagittarius, an Aries or a Leo. And I also have a Taurus, a Taurus person in the picture as well. So what I feel here is if you are in a relationship with any of those signs, um, there's definitely, there's definitely a lot of love, but I almost feel like ideological differences get in the way. And what we have to try to remember is just because someone doesn't see the way see things the way that we see things it should not so if it's just on the ideological viewpoint if someone doesn't see things the way that you see things it shouldn't diminish you know your love for them or their love for you um, if someone rejects your idea they're rejecting your idea they're not rejecting you if someone doesn't do what you ask them to do it, it has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with them and where they're at and the way they see a situation. So ideological differences doesn't really diminish the love. It doesn't diminish or it doesn't undermine the, the love in the relationship. So seeing things from that perspective, I feel like is really going to help transform the way this relationship works for you. So we can agree to disagree. We don't always need to agree on any, on all topics under the sun in order for us to work as a unit, in order for us to move forward, in order for us to, you know, be together. Okay. And that, that is with family, that is with love relationships. And I feel um, more so with love relationships. So I almost feel like there is a major separation between your work life and your personal life, which is probably a good thing, but I almost feel like you have double standards when it comes to what you tolerate from people who are really close to you versus the really bad behaviors that you tolerate from people in your work environment. And I mean, you know, we do have to do what we need to do in order to survive. So we know that work pays the bills. And so when we come to work, we have to behave in a different manner. But I almost feel like this set of double standards, okay? It's like, it's like treating strangers with a lot of compassion, but treating your loved ones with a lot of like criticism. That's what it feels like to me. Because I have with this um, Ace of Swords, it's on top and the Ace of Cups is on the bottom. It's like extending, being harsh with certain people and then extending love to other people. And you want to make sure that the people are deserving, okay? You want to make sure that the people that are doing their due diligence, that are, you know, taking care of their responsibilities, are the ones that should be getting the love and the support. Whereas the ones that have been reneging on their responsibilities that, you know, leave things to the last minute are the ones that are, that should be getting chastised. So I, I feel like directing your energy towards the right people rather than directing your focus, directing your energy towards the right people rather than penting up your energy and your anger and then having it come out or direct it towards the wrong people, the ones that don't deserve it, the ones that are just like on the sidelines 
and the ones that have nothing to do with the root of the problem okay so uh, this is a week for us to kind of reassess where we have been too harsh and where we are giving our energy and especially if we're giving our energy to people that are charming and um to people that are charming and just evasive and irresponsible when we should be giving the love to people who are you know doing their fair share of the work who are responsible who have been nothing but honest so i feel like that element is coming through um you might be called in to mediate situations as well and i feel like there might be i'm seeing like an interview panel it's like they're deciding on the next candidates and somebody might call out sick and you might be kind of like interim. You might be called in to fill that position on a panel where you are um, assessing people's um, work potential. You're uh, uh, assessing people's skills. You are assessing people's um, work history. So I don't know if you're on a panel to do that. Um, so like I said, somebody might call out sick, you might be a filler. Or if you do this on a regular basis, I feel like there will be a lot of um, there will be a lot of good candidates. Okay, so be careful about those charming ones. Be careful about the ones that are you know super articulate. But when it comes to their work history, and you 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 want to make sure you call you follow up and call their references. Okay, and asking the right questions. So I definitely feel like it's going to be a very busy week. There's lots to do and lots to take care of. And you need to keep your kind of like your mind razor sharp and pick your battle so that you're not stretched too thin. Um, I'm seeing as well. I honestly feel many of you have a lot of support from the people in your work environment, especially the higher ups. Okay. I mentioned this with Libras as well, but I also feel it coming through from you. With Libras, it seems like they're getting a lot of assistance. And I feel like with you, you don't reach out. You you never reach out when you have, you know, when, when you need assistance. You are very stoic and this is like earth sign. This is typical earth sign energy. You Taurus Capricorn. You guys are very stoic. You guys are self-sufficient and you pride yourself, especially you and the Capricorn. You pride yourself on being self-sufficient, on being able to do things on your own. And you work best, actually, when you're on your own, when you're left to your own devices because you know what needs to be done. And so the, the, the whole process regarding teamwork, group effort, all of those things are nice in theory, but you know in real life they hinder progress. In real life, if you're left to your own devices, that's when things, that's when magic happens. And so you might be shying away from group work. You might be shying, shying away from, you know, working together with other people because everyone's going to have their own agenda and everyone is um, not on the same page when it comes to their reliability and everyone's not on the same page when it comes to uh, their ability to take care of things. So I feel like, you know, group work is just like the bane of your existence. Um, I'm also sensing as well. Um, I'm also feeling as well, and this is, you know, relationships. For those of you who have recently broken off a relationship, and especially if children are involved, like a separation, a divorce, or something like that, I feel almost like a coming together in the relationship for the sake of the kids, wanting to resolve things or wanting to stay together, wanting to um, give it one last try or wanting to, you know, make amends and repair these rifts because there's a lot of love. There's definitely a lot of love and there's definitely, you know, the element of children involved as well um, because you want to keep the, the, the environment stable and, and just, um, you think it's going to be good for the kids. Make sure all parties are on board and make sure that, you know, um, it, it's almost like you should do it for the kids, but at the same time, if you know this is a cyclical merry-go-around, if you know that, you know, you're going to get into heated arguments with your partner, um, it's best not to keep that energy around the children, okay? Learning to, to air out 
the dirty laundry, learning to air out these things behind closed doors, I feel is the best strategy. Okay, so you might be dealing with somebody who's very explosive. Like when they're upset, they need everybody to know that they're upset. They're, they're, they're kind of like a little bit like dramatic. Okay. Um, and I feel like keeping that energy a little bit tame or having that conversation with your partner so that you can have these, so that you can remove the children away from the conflict or you can, you know, air out your differences behind closed doors. I feel like that's the more adult thing to do. So that's all that I have for you, Virgos. I hope the reading resonates. I hope it has been helpful for you. And I do wish you all the best, okay? And um, I'll be back next week. Take care of yourself. Hopefully this energy will clear up and then we'll have, you know, like a clean slate reading, okay? Take care. I'll talk to you guys soon.